Hi guys, so this is another study tip from Nursing U 2.0, and this is talking about testing and picking the right answer. Okay, so the method I'm going to be going through is like a decision making method. You might have heard decision tree, uh, you might have heard step by step breakdown. Okay, it really depends on what school or program that you've looked at. Okay, but we're going to be talking um, step by step process, and there are five steps to this decision making method, and this is going to help you eliminate false choices. Um, if you do decide to use this tool, it will help you answer most questions. Even if you do not know the answer, you can usually figure it out by just eliminating all those other choices. Okay, so the first step in this is choosing the topic. All right, we have to know what the question is asking. You're going to read the entire question and decide what it's actually asking you before you look at any answer choices. So a good way to do this is to use your hand and cover up the answer choices so you're not tempted to just you know, pick an answer. Right, so you're only going to look at those choices if you still can't figure out what the topic is. Right? I'm going to be going through an example question, so don't get nervous. I'm not just going to drop you with steps, um, but I would like to go through all five steps and kind of break those down before we go to an example. So step two, are we assessing or are we doing? Okay, so you're going to look at every answer choice and ask yourself, is this an assessment or am I doing something? Okay, and don't be fooled because remember, assessments can be actions. So think about taking vital signs, drawing labs. Those are all actions, but you're actually getting more assessment data for that patient. Okay, so don't be fooled by the actions that are actually assessments. So you go through each answer choice and ask assessment or um, intervention. Right? And then ask yourself, do you need more information? Okay, so if you have a multiple choice and two of the answers are assessment, and two of them are interventions, or you're doing something, you have to ask yourself, do I need more information? Okay, so take it back up to the stem, really look at what it's giving you. If it already gave you enough assessment data to help that patient, then you're probably safe to pick an intervention. If you don't have enough data, you're gonna pick assessment. Okay, we can only do after we assess. So step three, you're going to ask, are these question, are those answer choices physical or psych? Right? So re read every answer choice and then say, is it something that is physically affecting the patient or something that is psychologically affecting them? Okay? If you have a mixture of both, you always pick the physical over the psych. Right? I can always fix my crying patients later. I can't always fix their broken arm. Right? So <laughs> think about it that way. If you have a patient that comes in and their toe got cut off, and they're bleeding out, and they're crying about it, are you gonna be like, oh, they're there, you're okay, or are you gonna actually fix their toe? Of course, you're gonna fix their toe first, right? So it's always physical over psych. And keep in mind that pain is always psych, right? So if you have a choice that talks about pain, it's usually not the right answer, unless that uh, question is somehow asking about pain, which usually they don't. All right, step four are ABCs. All right, so you guys probably know these as airway breathing circulation, but I've added an S, okay? So we talk about airway breathing circulation safety, right? If any of those answer choices talk about any of those four things, there's a good chance that that's the answer, right? We have to keep in mind um, what's going to kill our patient first. And that sounds like really dramatic, but if you just ask yourself that when you're reading your answer choices, it's usually the answer, right? If what's going to kill them first? Key point, just because the answer choice says something about the airway breathing circulation or safety, it doesn't always make it the correct one, but you have to look back to the stem. Okay, so for example, if I'm asking you about someone's bladder, um, saying that they you know, have urinated 3,000 mLs in the last hour, and one of the answer is place the patient on oxygen, okay, that's not going to fix my stem, right? So just because it has airway breathing in it, doesn't make it the correct choice. All right? So it has to make sense. So just keep that in mind. Okay, step five. This is the most important step. If you don't remember anything from this lecture, please remember step five. Okay, this is your what happens if. Okay? Or in other words, it could be like, what's the outcome of doing that or assessing that? So you go through each answer choice and ask yourself, what would happen if I do this? All right? But make sure you don't add to your story. Right. So um, what I mean by that is, if you read an answer choice, it literally is just what it's saying. So if one of the answer choices is, call the doctor, you're literally just calling the doctor. 
Okay? It doesn't tell you that you're telling the doctor everything about that patient, right? And that's not always something to be added. It really is at face value. So don't add to the answer choice. So what would happen if, right? So this is gonna make more sense with our example question. So let's get into that. All right, so here's an example question and we're gonna break it down using the five steps. The nurse is caring for a patient who has not urinated in over six hours. Which of the following actions by the nurse would be the most appropriate? Okay, so we have A, ask the patient if they're having any cramping, B, palpate the bladder, C, insert an indwelling urinary catheter, or D, administer the prescribed furosemide. Okay, so remember, I'm giving you the answer choices before, just so you can see the whole question, but if we break it down, we really don't want to look at those quite yet until we figure out the topic, right? So step one, what is this question asking you? All right, so what is the topic of the question? The nurse is caring for a patient who has not voided in over six hours. Which of the following actions by the nurse is the most appropriate? So if I don't look at any of my choices, the things that stick out to me are someone's not voiding and it's been over six hours. So what am I gonna do? Right, so what's the topic of the question? The patient hasn't voided in over six hours. Right, this seems like a long time to not void. So we know the topic, and now we're going to go to step two. All right, so are my answer choices assessing or are they doing? All right, so question or answer choice A, ask the patient if they're having any cramping. Okay. That's going to be an assessment, right? We're getting data from that patient. B, palpating the bladder. So again, remember it's an action, but it's actually an assessment, right? Because if we're palpating the bladder, we're going to get more information. We're collecting data. Inserting an indwelling urinary catheter. Okay, so that's a doing. That means we're doing something, right? You're putting in a catheter. And finally, D, administering the prescribed furosemide. Okay, that is also an action. Okay, so that is doing. So again, you're going to go and ask yourself, do I need more information? Okay. The patient hasn't voided in over six hours. That does not give me a lot of information. So yes, I need more. Okay, I cannot really do anything until I know what's going on with the patient. So if you think about it in that way, if we cannot do before we assess, then I can automatically eliminate C and D. So that really leaves me with only two answer choices. So already we're off to a good start, right? But we'll keep going and we'll pretend we'll do every step like we haven't eliminated anything. Okay. All right, so in step three, physical or psych, you're looking at those two to, uh, top, top answer choices, and again, you can pretend like you didn't eliminate C and D, but really those are both physical, correct? So, and they're actions. Uh, so we're gonna pretend those aren't there, all right? So out of the A and B, which is physical and which is psych? So, out of A, asking the patient if they're having any cramping. It's psych, right? And remember why, because pain is always psych. Pain is always psychological. Cramping, aching, stabbing, it doesn't matter what kind of pain they're in, it's psychological. But palpating the bladder is physical, right? So now we've eliminated A, so B is our correct answer. Okay, so in this question, you actually got to the correct answer without even going to the other two steps. But again, let's pretend we didn't, right? Let's pretend, gosh, you know, I don't know, I see that their assessment and they're doing, there's psych and there's physical, but I just, I still can't figure it out. All right, so that's fine. So let's jump to step four. Okay, so the ABCs. Right, so you're asking, are any of the answer choices dealing with airway, breathing, circulation, or safety? Um, in this particular one, they're really not. So some kind, sometimes your questions are going to have those ABCs, and sometimes they won't, and that's okay. If they don't have the uh, ABCs, then we skip to step five. All right, my favorite, favorite step. So step five, what happens if... All right, looking at the outcomes for every answer choice, and you're asking yourself, what is going to help this patient? Or what's going to fix the situation? All right? If the answer choice hurts the patient or does nothing, then that's definitely not the answer. All right, so let's go through each one and look at the outcome of doing that answer choice. All right, so what's the outcome of asking the patient if they're having any cramping? Not really anything, right? The patient's going to say yes or no, but you still haven't fixed the problem. Right? So it's doing nothing. So that cannot be the answer, right? In B, palpate the bladder. What's going to be the outcome of me touching someone's bladder who has not urinated in over six hours? Well, easy. I can feel forward distension. 
right? So if I have someone who hasn't urinated in over six hours and they're distended, chances are is they're retaining fluid. But what happens if I palpate and they're not distended? That means they might not be retaining fluid, they might be really dehydrated, which could be an even worse problem. But either way, I'm getting more information that's gonna help me help that patient, right? So that's definitely the correct answer. We're helping the situation. All right, well, we'll go through C and D just so you can see how this outcome works. So the outcome of inserting an indwelling catheter. You may or may not get urine, right? We don't know why they're not urinating, but you now have increased risk of infection, right? So now we might be hurting the patient. So we're either doing nothing or hurting in this case scenario. So that's definitely not the correct answer. And of course, administering furosemide, which is your Lasix. Again, you may or may not get urine, and now we have those side effects to deal with, right? So it could possibly hurt, but really might not do anything. So B is definitely the correct answer. It's an assessment, meaning it's gonna be coming to form my actions, and it's gonna give us the most information to fix that patient. Okay, so you guys can see that this step five is such a, such a crucial step. Okay, so if you remember nothing from the rest of these, remember to try step five. It really does work. So key points, just what I said. You at least use step one and step five. Remember step one's that topic. Can't really answer the question if you don't have the topic. And of course, step five are your outcomes. You can try this method too with your select all that apply. You probably won't be able to do this step by step, but you can go through every answer choice and kind of ask yourself, is this answer choice true or false? And again, you can even use the outcomes, right? So you can either outcome every answer choice in that select all, asking yourself if it's true, and then ask yourself, does it hurt, help, or do nothing? If it hurts or does nothing, it's not one of the answers. Right? I really hope this method helps you. Um, again, you can always comment, leave me uh, messages, and let me know if there's anything else I can help you with to get this method across. All right? See you guys later.